So I have here a bowling ball. And we're going to try to figure out in this lesson what factors affect how much potential energy due to gravity this bowling ball has. We're also going to talk about elastic potential energy, which is that potential energy when something bends. And I'm going to teach you how to make these energy poppers out of a racquetball. So remember that energy is the ability to cause pain. And so think about this bowling ball. What could you do that would make it cause more pain if you dropped it on your foot? Would lifting it up make it more painful? Would making the bowling ball big, be bigger be more painful? Would taking it to a planet where there's more gravity or less gravity make it be more painful when it drops on your foot? So I want to give you what I call a ranking task, which is a situation where you have some different scenarios and I want you to put them in order based on something. And in this case, I have bowling balls on different planets, different height of shelves on the rack, and also a couple of different masses of the bowling ball. I want you to rank them based on what has the most pain down to what has the least amount of pain if it were to slip off of that shelf and land on your foot. So pause the video for a minute and put them in the order that you think they ought to go. Most pain down to least pain. So the one that would cause maybe a regular amount of pain, we could say, or I'll call this level pain one, is A. And because B has twice the mass, it would cause twice the pain. So let's call that pain level two. We come over here to Mars. Mars is twice the height of Earth, uh, or of this, sh this shelf here on Earth. So that would be twice the pain. So that would be a pain level four, but then it only has one-third the gravity. So I'd have to divide that number by three, so that I'd get one and a third there. And on Jupiter, um, this is going to have the same mass and height as A does, but because it's on Jupiter, it has three times gravity, so it'll have three times as much pain, three times as much pain when that falls down. So that would be a three. So the most pain in this case is going to be D. And then B would be second, followed by C on Mars. And then A would come in last. So we can see here that these three things seem to affect the pain when something is up on a shelf. When there's more mass, we'll get more pain. When it's higher up, we'll get more pain. When gravity is stronger, we'll also get more pain. And this idea of pain, remember, is representing potential energy due to gravity. And so potential energy due to gravity must be those three things put together. Mass times gravity strength times the height. I want to give you an example now of how you'd use this. So imagine that you have someone up on a ladder here. Strength of gravity on the Earth is around 10 newtons per kilogram, a 100 kilogram person, and they're two meters up on the ladder. So using our formula that we now have developed for potential energy due to gravity, we can then put in the numbers that we know and calculate how much energy uh, there is in this situation. So we've got 100 here. We've got 10 newtons per kilogram here, and then we have two meters. Multiply those together, we get 2,000. And remember the units for energy are joules, and these do work out to be joules of energy. Or if we remember the hint that there's about 4,000 joules in one calorie, we could say that this is roughly half of a food calorie uh, worth of energy. So we're going to test your skills here on using energy. I have some Tic Tacs, and they say that they are 1.9 calories each. So if I grab a Tic Tac, pop it in my mouth, chew on it a bit here, mmm, strawberry fields, not bad. If I'm 80 kilograms, and the stairs are 2.75 meters high, how many times am I going to have to go up the stairs to be able to burn off this tic-tac? Now, we don't know exactly, but let's just figure out how much energy 
it would I would gain in potential energy that's equivalent to what the tic tac has because maybe my body uses some of the energy and not all of it would burn it off or something like that but um, pause the video and see if you can figure that out 80 kilograms 2.75 meters high you know the strength of gravity 10 newtons per kilogram how many times would I have to run the stairs to to use up an equivalent amount of energy to about two calories pause the video and figure it out All right, here we go. I'll start doing the stairs. Okay. Man, why did I ever agree to do this demo? There's one. Not done yet. I gotta go a little quicker here. Two, not done yet. There's three. Gotta be getting close, don't I? What did you calculate anyway? Right there. Should be about 3.6 times up the stairs. I'm tired now. Uses the same amount of energy, or at least I would gain the same amount of potential energy as what was in that, that uh, Tic Tac. I gotta take a break now. What I want to show you next is the potential energy elastic stored in the finger rocket. We're going to take that finger rocket and shoot it straight up in the air. And as we shoot it up in the air, potential energy elastic will transfer into potential energy due to gravity with a little bit dissipated because of air resistance. So it's going to depend on two f main factors, how stretchy or springy the material is and the stretch distance. So we want to s be able to measure that potential energy elastic based on how high up the finger rocket goes. So you can kind of imagine the springiness of the material. If the rubber band is twice as thick, it'll probably go up twice as high. But the question of the stretch distance is a little bit more tricky. If you double the stretch distance, does it really double the height? I mean, it's going to increase the height, but will it double it? So let's do a little experiment here and find out. We're going to take this finger rocket and stretch it down a half a brick and then launch it. And when we do, it goes up about 2.75 bricks. When we take the finger rocket and stretch it a full brick, or double the distance, it goes way up there, about 10 bricks tall. So, doubling the stretch distance does not double the height shot. It goes up by more than double. In fact, it's not even triple the height shot. Turns out that it's more like four times. Four times 2.75 would be 11. And if we imagine a little bit dissipated so we don't quite get up to 11, 10 seems about right. So squaring the, the stretch distance gives you four times the shot height. So that means our formula has to have a square in it for the distance. One half times the springiness times the stretch distance squared. K represents the springiness in the formula, and X represents the stretch distance. So 1 half KX squared is a formula for, for potential energy elastic. So here are some regular paper clips. And I'm just going to take it and bend this into a triangle shape. So it kind of looks like that. The idea here is this is going to be a spring and I'm going to push this so that it catches on itself. But it can be kind of tricky because they're slick to get them to stay. Yeah, so what I like to do is take scissors and kind of mark up, pretend like you're cutting a little bit in the metal, and it kind of puts some lines in there so it's not so smooth and slick. So it'll kind of catch on itself a little bit better. We'll see if this works. Usually that does the trick. Okay, so bend it, and there it's staying, and now I should be able to, oh, squirt it too much. Let's try dropping it, nope. There we go. So maybe I scored that one up a little bit too much. 
Let's see if that does it every time. There, it flipped. Let's see if I can get another one real quick. I got that one without scoring it. There we go. That was a good one. I'll show you how to make the racquetball poppers now. I'm going to take this X-Acto knife for doing craft stuff, and I'm going to carefully push into the ball, and then I'm going to cut the ball down the middle. These are very sharp, so of course you want to be careful with this. And almost there. Okay. Now if I p invert this now and kind of pop it, it's too much. It, it, you can't get it to release. I have to really push on it. So I've got to trim this down. And the point where it's exactly enough trimming is a little bit hard to say. It's easy to trim too much off. So I'm just going to take the scissors here and slowly shave some off. Maybe, maybe a little bit over here now. That was kind of a big piece. I hope it wasn't too much. Aha! See? Just barely took off too much. So let that be a warning to you. Here's my other half. See if I can get this one right. Now that seems pretty good there. See if I could drop it on the ground and it works. There we go. I find that if you spin it, it actually helps it fall flat and uh, pops up pretty good when you do that. So, paper clips and racquetballs make good energy poppers, and they're a really great illustration of potential energy.